I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, turn with me if you would, to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, as we come into this uh, particular chapter, we know that Paul has been charging Timothy with a number of things. He's been encouraging him as a young pastor in the faith, and there's certainly many things that we can learn from him as a pastor, but there's also many things that every Christian individual can learn from him. And as we come into 1 Timothy chapter 2, we are reminded of the importance of prayer here in this chapter. Uh, we see the importance of prayer and worship and the need that we have for it in our lives as believers. As a matter of fact, the following three chapters that we're going to look at, chapters 2, 3, and 4, in particular, deal with the conduct and the order of public worship in the church. You can see that by looking at 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, where Paul said to Timothy, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. So here we see that he writes to him to remind him of how he is, how they are to behave in the house of God. So it could be that there was uh, public worship that was a failure because both men and women were disobedient to God's word. And, and the exact same thing is possible today. We can get to the place where our public worship avails nothing or means nothing because of the fact that we are living in disobedience to God. Remember what what uh, was said to Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 15, I believe it is, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. So it's important for us to see as we come through 1 Timothy, we must understand that there are many churches today that are operating and worshiping in an unscriptural way. Sadly, many of them have become little more than a social organization or things of that nature. And it is totally possible to worship in a non-scriptural way. That is to worship in a way that is not pleasing to God, to worship in a way that is not mandating in scriptures. Among the people that are doing that are people that are speaking in tongues and, get, and guilty of disorderly behavior. There are some who would use contemporary Christian music and still say that the Holy Spirit of God is leading. My friends, that is not the case. And as we come into these three chapters, we're going to see about the conduct and the order of a church. That the conduct in a church and the order of a church matters greatly to God. And as we come into verses 1 through 7 of 1 Timothy chapter 2, we're going to be looking at this business of intercessory prayer, which simply means us praying for others. Now, there's a number of things that we learn here, but let's just read the first uh, four verses, and then we'll get into this today in the time that we have. It says in 1 Timothy 2, 1, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So first of all, we see here the proportion of such prayer in verses 1 and 2. Let me remind you, first of all, it says here, that God's people are exhorting to pray. He says, I exhort, exhort therefore, that first of all, supplication, Prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Isn't it sad to a great degree that God's people need to be encouraged toward the activity of prayer? That God's people need to be commanded and reminded of the importance to pray? But that's exactly what happens here. And, and Paul tells Timothy that prayer is something that needs to happen first of all. How much do we go in and through our churches and the activities of our churches apart from this business of prayer. And Paul says that, first of all, prayer needs to happen. Prayer is where we get our power as believers. It is where we get our power as a church. It is where we declare our dependence upon God. And prayer is not a last resort. Prayer is something that ought to be happening first of all. God's people are exhorting to pray. Come back with me, if you would, to Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, rather, chapter seven. You probably know this verse, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, and I want to read verses fourteen through sixteen. 
So 2 Chronicles 7, beginning in verse 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their seeing and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So there we are reminded of the importance of prayer, humbling ourselves and praying. First of all, that we would give ourselves the prayer. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Friends, it is sad, but it is true that prayer has lost its importance in churches. Announce a church supper and crowds will come, but announce a prayer meeting and hardly anyone will attend in many churches today. Oh, friends, prayer is to happen first of all, and God's people are exhorting to pray. Notice the intent of prayer. There are four aspects here. First of all, supplication. This idea of supplication is prayer that is focused on special needs, bringing a deep and intense burden before the Lord. As I think about supplications, I'm reminded of Ephesians chapter 6, and in verses 18 and 19, it says, they're praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. So when we think of supplication, we are thinking of, of a deep earnest prayer that we have. And then it says prayers. That idea is, is prayers in general, these times that we set aside to come into the Lord's presence to worship Him and to spend time at His feet. Prayers. Prayer is an act of worship, friends, not just listing our wants and our needs. When we come before God in prayer, we ought to be coming before Him to worship. And then it says intercession. That idea of intercession is bold praying on behalf of others. Uh, it, is, it also carries with it the idea of bringing petitions to a superior. It is remembering that God is God and that we are not. And as we come into his presence, that we are coming into the presence of the holy God of the universe, but that we are coming making intercessions or petitions on behalf of another. And we're coming longing for the needs that other people have. And then he says here, and giving of thanks. That carries with it the idea of gratefulness. Thanksgiving is something that is more than just a one day a year thing. It ought to be the way that we live our lives. Thanks living should be what we call it. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And sadly, that's something that's missing in much of our prayer today. We come and we are diligent in asking and bringing our petitions and interceding for others. But how often do we come back to give him thanks? The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, be careful. That word careful there means to be anxious or to be worried, to be full of care, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Oh, friends, we need to be a people that are thankful in our prayers as well. And then we see the extent of prayer here. It says, be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Notice, first of all, for all men. That is the saved and the unsaved. Really, this is can only be done in a general way. You know, as we pray for all, I mean, obviously we can't pray for everybody in the entire world specifically, but we need to pray that God would be at work in hearts, that he would be stirring hearts, bringing people to repentance, that he would be uh, showing in the hearts and lives of the saved that they would long for that walk with God that only God can bring, and that they would long to walk in fellowship with God. We need to be praying the Bible says, for all men. Tomorrow, we'll continue our study and we'll look at what this prayer looks like 
that we pray for all men, and then specifically how we can be praying for some people specifically. I invite you to join us tomorrow as we continue looking at 1 Timothy chapter 2 and what it has to say about prayer. Have a great day.